Good morning, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much today. We honor your name for gathering us together again. Father, even as your word tells us that we have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, that we have come to thousands upon thousands of innumerable angels. We are in the company of angels, saints and angels gathered together to worship you this morning. We honor you for the invitation to come. We thank you that God you count us as worthy this morning to be in your presence, to say, holy, holy, holy is our God. Father, that today, even as the elders fall down in worship and place their crowns before you, we do the same thing today in this morning devotion, that we lay down all of our accomplishments, everything that we think is so great and mighty in our lives, we lay it down at your feet and say, Lord Jesus, it is because of you. It is yours. We honor you and we praise you. And as we gather today, my Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that is about to teach us great and amazing things such as we have never known before. So we thank you, my God. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning and welcome to a new week and a new day in his presence. Let's go now and give God a high praise. Hallowed be thy name, Jehovah God, you reign, and you will never change, O oh Lord, forever you're the same. Sing it again. Hallowed be thy name. Jehovah God, you reign, and you will never change, O oh Lord, forever you're the same. He's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. Jehovah Jireh, you supply my every need. Let your spirit rise into the presence of the Lord, and you will never change, O oh Lord, forever you're the same, Jehovah Shalom. Do you need peace tonight? Shepherd, lead me. Hallowed be thy name. Jehovah God, you reign. You reign over all, Lord. And you will never change. Oh, Lord. Forever you're the same. Do you need to be clean by his blood? Then sing it, Jehovah Kadesh. You're the one who makes me clean. Hallelujah, Jehovah sick and bruised, imparting righteousness to me. God, you reign, and you will never change, O oh Lord, forever you're the same, Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory. 
Hallelujah. Today being Monday, we do not have general prayers. So let's go to our scripture reading. The Bible reading today will be taken from 2 Peter. Let us all open to 2 Peter chapter 1, 1 to 11. Let's open to 2 Peter chapter 1, 1 to 11. Let's welcome our pastor, Pastor Jesus Graham as he reads the infallible word of God to us this morning. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to 11. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, verse 7, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity, verse 8. For if these things be in you, and are bound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was spared from his old sins, verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall, verse 11. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Jesus. It's now time for the word of God. Let us welcome and receive our senior pastor, Pastor Olatunji Adeninka, as he brings us the church this morning and the Holy Spirit himself minister to us. Welcome, Pastor Glory to God. Thank God again this morning. What a privilege that we have to be in his presence. Morning by morning, he said, he waking at me to hear. May we truly hear again this morning. Father, help us to hear that voice. 
your voice that is behind the word because your hand cannot be stayed where your voice is heard. We thank you in Jesus' name. This week, and I, I'm not sure I will finish it this week, we'll be looking at growing in the knowledge of God. Growing in the knowledge of God. That you have been in the church for 20 years, maybe, does not mean <laughs> you have really, really grown in the knowledge of God. Many people know about God, but very few people know him. And the Bible itself encourages us to grow. And we read from the book of uh, Peter this morning, and I think even both first and second Peter <coughs> are really filled on this subject. And I want us to see it so in appreciating it, we can walk with it. One of the great revelations of our Christian faith and our Christian walk was given by Apostle Peter himself. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 2, that he said, as newborn babes, let us desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow. Why I call it one of the major revelations of scripture or our Christian faith is because it brought the reality down to us that look, when you get saved, you are just like a newborn babe and that we can all connect with, we can all understand and we can all appreciate. It doesn't matter how old you are in the world. It doesn't matter what qualifications you have. He said, if you are just born again, you are as a newborn baby. Who desires milk? Because we all know that even when you have a newborn baby, you can't feed that baby with just anything or everything, no, it's milk. And then the word is that you might grow. Just know that you have a little baby, you have to keep feeding the baby to grow. And how well the baby is fed will determine the rate of growth. We know that. So keeping that in mind, we go into this message. Again, Twitter said in um, 2 Peter 3.18, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord <laughs> and Savior Jesus Christ. Grow in grace. Grow in grace. So the admonition for growth is all over the place. Spiritual growth. Like I said, we have many people in church, our churches today, they've been there for a long time. So we just had Zoom. And I mean, they've been part of all the activities and everything. Oh, this must be it. These are the ones who know what. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way. We just read this morning from Second Peter chapter 1. Peter, one thing I always like us to know is First, who are the audience here? To whom is this written? He said, to them that have obtained the like precious faith with us. And how did they obtain this like precious faith? Through the righteousness of God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Pretty much saying, this is it. I'm talking to believers here. I'm talking to people who are saved here, people who have obtained, people who are in this precious faith, like us. That's why it's a like precious faith. It's important for us to understand that. So 
we can appreciate what it goes on for that to expose to us or reveal. I like that one better. This is a letter written to believers. Like precious faith. That is the same precious faith we have. This means to us that is concerned about us not just getting saved, but then moving on to experience God in reality and in truth. Or let me use the word Jesus used in spirit and in truth. Having a well-grounded and understood knowledge of God. He went on in verse 2 and said, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. If he had stopped there, we might not be talking what we are talking about today. Grace and peace. Those are two great ingredients of our faith, of our walk with God. But he said, will be multiplied, added to you in multiplied form. But then it's true, the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord. That means he wants us to truly, truly have the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord. Grace and peace that you are born again go to church do all the ceremonies we do don't mean a multiplication of grace and peace in your life except you grow in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ how is this done he said according as is divine power I'm reading verse 3 now are given unto us all things, not that word, I think I will concentrate on that today, that pertain to li unto life and godliness, to the knowledge of him. You see, again, it's through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of him. He's really, really concerned that we grow in the true knowledge of God. You see, some of us have um, misconstrued the knowledge of God with how many Bible verses we can quote. Or that we are reading it. You know, and all that we do with it, or even preaching it. <laughs> it's not it's not just straight like that. Oof, yeah, your eyes of understanding being enlightened, he said to know. I've 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 sat like I said or listen to and I hear people preach scripture and my body is quaking. Are we reading the same Bible? What was he talking about? And with excitement to go, we just kill it. The depth of understanding that comes to It's about gaining and growing, listen to this, an authentic experience of the knowledge of God. You know, Jesus said, you worship, you know not what. Now, back to the subject of grace and peace. It's through the knowledge of God. More grace, more peace, more grace, more praise. You know, grace is what makes it work. 
It's the oil that makes it all work, that makes it all fit together, that makes it all go well. And that's what God gives us. To do whatever we're called to do. We call it unmerited favor. He favors us. When you are favored of the Lord, it goes well with you. But then it, it, it grows exponentially. It increases exponentially. As our knowledge of God does. Peace is the ability to be calm. No matter the circumstance. That will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind? Look at it again. When you're talking of the mind, <laughs> you know knowledge is a well-structured part of that area. Whose mind is stayed on you? Because he trusts in you. Trust actually comes as we know him. Because someone you don't know you can trust. The more you know, the more you can trust. Peace, that ability to become in the midst of the storms. The storms will multiply through that experiential knowledge of God. If grace is to be multiplied, if peace is to be multiplied, then knowledge has to increase so much. The knowledge of God. And you see, grace is what God gives. Remember when you read from that beautiful passage in Second Corinthians chapter 9. Every man according as purposes in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly, nor of necessity, the Bible says. But willingly, because God loves a cheerful giver. He said, and then God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That ye always having all sufficiency in all things. We are bound unto every good work. When we put our resources in his hands, when we commit ourselves to the cause of his kingdom with our resources, when we do this in return, he releases to you grace. In this case, he calls it all grace. That's a secret a lot of us are still struggling with. Why? Because you love money. <laughs> it's like God, you can touch everything around me, but don't move near my money. Off. <laughs> and I've told you just by on the other side, how well you go with God is pretty much directly connected with how well you are able to have it with your resources. Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, okay, go, all of you, but leave your resources behind. And Moses said, you are joking. He said, because all we must we take to serve the Lord our God. And we don't know whatever it will demand or whatever it will take. That means, as far as we are concerned, everything is laid out for him as he wills. That's how we serve him. Not with... Um, Reservation. They say you are faith in God, but actually that's not true. Your faith is in what you have kept somewhere, which cannot keep you anyway. That's not my subject today, but I, something happened last week as I was teaching. I had a very strong in indication, inclination from heaven. Lord. And it's so funny that you can be preaching like this and yet you are arguing and can't argue with God inside you but you are still preaching because that's what happened. Because when it comes to that area, I know a lot of people don't want to hear. Oh, they're talking about money again. So who is looking for your money? 
But you know, it's the same God you will run to when you get stranded. I'd like to tell you as you enter this new year, I felt that very strongly last week. I was just thinking, God, these people just leave them alone. Let's continue teaching what we are teaching. Because that's an area they don't want to hear, but it didn't they leave me. You need to sow a sacrifice to the Lord to seal your twenty your work for 2024 with it. I'm sure some of you, your churches will have laid it out for you, but if not, know that it's something you have to do even before this week is over. Put a lot of us just don't know him. So we we just do things the way we feel and we think that's how it works. No, it's God. You need to go explore what's the meaning of that word God in the first place. He always demands. He always, and I can repeat that, demands. Not because he's in need, because that is what you need to open the door for you. He will always demand. And you need to do that. And I'm not going to talk too much on that. I've said what I have to say. The things you are holding on to becomes a God in your life. It will free your destiny. Uh, I need to find my way back. Yes, God is able to make all grace, all grace about towards you that you always have enough sufficiency in all things to keep doing the good works. He has commanded. I think we talked about this not too long ago. He wants to give us that experience. But back to Second Peter, how is that going to happen? We just read at verse 3. It says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. He has given, not that he's going to give, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him, of course. When you get saved, remember 1 John 12, say, John 1, 12 says, to as many as received him, to them give you power to become. You can have everything in place, but you need power to run it, just like most of these equipment you have. But when, when you compare a manual equipment without power, without the use of power, to a powered equipment, you see the difference. According as his divine power are given, he has given. What did he give? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. Listen to me, God's people. Everything you need to become all you are meant to be, you already have. <laughs> I'm sure somebody will say, Pastor, you have come again. Everything you need to become or you are redeemed to be, you already have. I was told the story of a great publisher who was looking for an exclusive painting who was not able to find it. So he sent his team all over the world to go look for it. And they came back, they couldn't find it. Then somebody said, oh, Something strange just happened. Your cleaner went to the basement where you kept a lot of things that you have put aside and found it there. So what he was running all over the world looking for, he already had it, but he just didn't know where it was. Some of us are looking for what we already have, but we don't know, number one, we have it. That's where knowledge comes. And if we, if we know we have it, we don't know where we kept it. We want to be more of this and more of that, but we already have. The Bible says everything that pertains to life and godliness, he has given. If you are in Christ, everything you need to meet the demands of life, you already have. But the problem there is, if you don't know you have it, then you don't know where to get it. If you don't know you have it, you'll probably be looking 
in places that can offer it for you. A bishop will say, if you don't know where you are going, everywhere you get to will probably look like it, or you find yourself somewhere else. Listen to this. At the point of conception, not even birth, in the womb of a woman, life is given. And everything that makes a man a man, a woman a woman, is in that life. And then it begins to grow, even in the womb of the woman. You know, Ecclesiastes tells us, the morning sow your seed, in the evening don't withhold your hand, because you don't know which one is going to answer when. Then he says something strange. He said, as thou knowest not what is the, how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, so may you not also know the way of the Spirit. It's the way of the Spirit. So you see, a egg is fertilized in the womb of a woman, but what eventually comes out is a child. Bones, eyes, everything. Not only that, not just the, 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 the physical structure. Much more than that. I think science by science, we know much of a lot of things today than before. But everything that that baby is going, is ever going to be, is already in his or her DNA at conception. The eyes comes with their color, <laughs> the bone structure, everything. <laughs> the mystery of God. Same with us when we get saved. Everything that conception needs to become a full-grown man, full-grown woman, is, is there. And then we grow. And then we begin to grow. As we begin to grow, they begin to form, they begin to reveal themselves, if I can even use that word. But if there is no growth, none of those things will show. Development, we call it. The lack of development makes you think everything is not there. If you don't already know it, development. So strange, I have two boys. <laughs> if you, and they have like 17 years in between them. But if you take their picture at the same age, even me that their father, I can't, say, I can't say who is who from that picture. I can't say who is who, I would just be looking, they just, and even now that this one is grown, that one is grown, they just look alike. Somebody met my son, a first son, somewhere in the midst of a lot of people. And they were talking, and he saw he had his voice, his mannerism, his face. And he told him instantly, you must be Pastor Adeka's son. That's a place where I was not. I'm, I'm not even in that circle. What am I saying? It's the same with you, your kids, your children. You just see. But those things were <laughs> the mysteries of life. They already formed. They're already there. And just as we grow and develop, they begin to show. This is by his divine power. He has granted us everything. It's already there. We need to explore it through knowledge. And grow as we grow in the knowledge of him and of our Lord. The development of all these things. No, that's why they call them potential. Things that are already there that you need to develop to manifest. Remember, we have said it, but I need to find a way to stop. Who you are or we will be, God has already determined that even before you are born. He says, say not I'm a child. 
Say before your father met your mother, I've already ordained you a prophet. <laughs> but you have to develop. Enter into all those things. Hence, we are talking of growing in the knowledge of God. I want you to know this morning as I round up and continue tomorrow, you already have these things. Just need to reposition yourself with a process of growth and development to match for manifestation. The things you are looking for that pertains to life, being able to handle and address all of life's issues in a way that pleases God, God has granted by like divine power. It's time to settle down with him to activate all these things in our lives. I trust God that as we continue on this trend and he opens our eyes to the, to the light of his word, he empowers our understanding, then we begin to see manifestation of the same in our lives. We'll continue from here tomorrow, but today, like I said last week, even this week, we're not going to do general prayers because at the beginning of this year, you need to be able to put yourself together with God. I will give you enough time to pray. Please use this prayer time for yourself. Not just waiting for when we call back to close. No. It's time to set yourself in order before God for the year. Where are you going? What are your aspirations? What do you need from heaven for this? As we go into prayer now, it's just for you. I've always been a proponent of people praying for themselves. That's why we grow us. A lot of us look for who oh, just pray for us, pray for us. No, 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 no. That's not how God designs it. So let's go before him. Lay it all out for him, before him. Get grace, get power, get whatever you need to get from him. Light and understand it. And we'll be back together shortly.
Amen. Amen. We thank God so much for this day. We thank God for his mercies, for his grace, um, for being with us on this platform this morning. We thank God so much for his presence that is always with us. We give him all the glory, all the honor and praise. We thank God so much. Um, you know, this week it's, it's amazing. Um, you know, the 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 practical we be, we began with just practical Christian living from last week, right? What we need to do to set ourselves up for the new year, and uh, praying that we all receive that word of God, right? That you know, all our messages are, are on KCI Media, and you know, on YouTube, so we can all go back to YouTube and listen to the message again. And we're encouraging all of us to go back. And listen and listen. As a faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. So please, let's do that. We thank God so much for the message that came to us this morning. As we all know, this program runs Monday through Friday from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Mountain Time. And we encourage to invite family and friends. We say we have we have a lot of capacity to take more people. Um, as many as can come, we have room for them. And so please, please go out there, invite people, make sure that you have, you know, each day when we're looking at the participant list, we will see names that you have invited and God will reward you for that. That is part of our service to the Lord. It is part of our service to God is to go and bring the people. You know, we remember Mary Magdalene when Jesus met Mary Magdalene. She went to the town. They went to tell all the men about this Jesus that she has found. And all of a sudden, Samaria, you know, uh, 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 which which was, you know, which was considered, you know, uh, an ungodly town. All the men came to Jesus and Jesus stayed there for two days and taught them and built a church there. And we are admonished to do the same thing, to go out there and tell people about what God is doing here. We thank God so much. Um, we also are encouraging all of us, as Pastor said. As you know, it is important for us to, to, to sow a sacrifice to the seed of sacrifice. The Bible says God himself said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He said, for God so loved the world that he sacrificed his only begotten son. So God is a God of sacrifice. God showed his love by sacrificing. And we are saying that that sacrifice breaks us into a new ground. Our sacrifice breaks us into a new ground. Anytime the Israelites who move to a new place, they'll make a sacrifice. They'll build a tabernacle. They'll build an altar and sacrifice all throughout the wilderness. They'll make sacrifice. And that sacrifice will open a new way for them going forward. So we all encourage to bring our sacrifice unto the Lord. It's very important. It's so biblical. There are many things that our prayers can do, but there are other things that we need a sacrifice to be able to move forward. And as we've begun the new year, make a sacrifice, make an atonement, a sacrifice to open the new year up to you, to have a covenant with the Lord. Say, Father God, this is my covenant with you this year. You know, if you are wise, you will connect. That is what the Bible says. You know, those who are wise will connect and they will receive it. And I pray that the grace that we talked about today, that grace will find us and help us uh, to be able to connect through our sacrifice. We thank God so much in Jesus' name. Let us receive the blessing for the day. Father, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost, we have come before you this morning. Our prayer is that, oh Lord, open up this day unto us, O God. Let your angels go before us in a pillar of fire, in a pillar of cloud, O God. Lord, losing every hardness before us, O God. Let your power, O God, losing every hard place before us, O God. Cause us to break through like a breach of waters, O God. Let your angels go fight for us, O Lord. Give us favor. Let your favor, eternal love, be upon us that anyone that sees us this day will favor us and give us tender love, O God. Cause us to be found 10 times better than our colleagues, just as you made Daniel, O God. Father, bring promotions unto us, O God. Your wife says, promotion comes not from the east or the west or the south, but it's the Lord that takes one up and puts us one down. Father, today, mark us for promotion, O God. Mark us for expansion, enlargement, O God. Cause us to break new grounds. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank God so much again. Give him all the glory, all the honor and praise. Um, let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Be blessed. Have a blessed day. See you all tomorrow morning. Amen.